Hello everyone, welcome to EIU's Global Outlook video for February 2024. My name is Anna Nichols, Director of the Industry Analysis Team at EIU, and I'll be talking today to our automotive analysts, Arushi Katecha and Nishita Agarwal, about electric vehicles and how they're being caught up in the US-China trade war. So Arushi, starting with you, everyone knows that EV sales have boomed in most major economies in the past few years. What do you see happening in 2024 and what's going to drive that? That's right, Anna. This year, we are expecting that global EV sales will grow by 29% to about 16 and a half million units. While that's certainly strong headline growth, it's actually slower than previous years because the market is starting to become mainstream. So in 2024, we reckon that EVs will account for more than a quarter of the global car market. And we expect that the share of EVs is only going to rise as we get closer to the 2035 target set by several governments for phasing out fossil fuel vehicles. But while the outlook in terms of sales is bullish, there are some barriers. One is the current supply chain blockages around the Red Sea, which is making it hard to ship vehicles and crucial EV components across the world. And another hurdle is poor charging infrastructure in many countries, which is putting off some potential EV buyers. But the main problem that we are seeing right now is increasing trade tensions for EVs, mainly because of China's dominance of the sector. China accounts for about 60% of global EV sales and 70% of EV production, and also largely controls production of batteries and their components. But in recent months, China's rising EV exports have been causing consternation in the US, Europe, and Japan, all of which remain major car producers. So turning to you, Nishita, can you explain what's happening in terms of these trade tensions? Uh, well, car producers like the US, EU, and Japan need to maintain EV sales uh, to meet their emission goals but they also don't want their own automotive sectors to disappear in the face of Chinese competition and an over-reliance on Chinese supplies. So they have been trying to promote domestic investment into EV production, and this has mostly been through subsidies and through local content requirements. Uh, they have also been raising trade barriers to fend off low-cost Chinese competition. Give me some examples of what's happening recently. Uh, sure, for example, in December, U.S. authorities detailed how car makers should source their EV components in order to qualify for subsidies. Uh, so any EV that contains a battery or uh, a component that is made by a foreign entity of concern, which means uh, China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea, does not qualify for the tax credits available for buyers under the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. And uh, in addition to that, companies that are more than 25% owned by an investor from one of these countries uh, can't access EV investment subsidies either. Um, well, EU has taken uh, a different approach to this because uh, apart from France, EU countries generally offer subsidies to local and foreign cars alike. Uh, but uh, now the EU has launched an investigation into Chinese state subsidies for EVs, arguing that these amount to unfair competition. Um, so this is likely to result in extra import tariffs being applied to Chinese EVs later this year. And uh, the US and EU have also passed regulations around the critical raw materials used for EV batteries in order to promote domestic supplies. Uh, I think the, uh, the EU rules will come into force sometime this year. So how will this pan out in future, do you think? Uh, well, hopefully the current blockages around the Red Sea will ease. Uh, we think sometime in the second quarter of 2024. Uh, but in the longer term, we are seeing a bifurcation emerge between China and US EU supply chains. Um, in the short term, this will cause higher costs and more inefficiency as EV makers look for alternative markets to source parts. But these problems should ease as supply chains develop further and uh, the US and EU include other developed economies like Japan into their supply chains. Uh, that said, we do expect China to maintain its dominance of the market because uh, it's not because it not only has numbers on its sides, uh, but it is also starting to develop some exciting new EV technologies like uh, new EV battery type and even hydrogen fuel cell EVs where Japan had an early lead. 
Turning back to you, Arushi, can you tell me a bit about what's happening in terms of battery development? Yes, um, absolutely. At the moment, about 90% of EV batteries are lithium-ion batteries of various types. But at the same time, new battery types are being developed in the hope of increasing driving range, reducing charging time, cutting costs, and improving safety. These new battery types include lithium ion manganese phosphate batteries, which can have a range of up to 1000 kilometers before charging. Tesla in the US and Goshen, which is a Chinese battery company, are trying those out. And on the other hand, we have BYD, a Chinese car maker, which will start mass producing sodium ion batteries this year. And because these batteries would use sodium rather than lithium, they should be a lot cheaper. But this also raises concerns about their range and power. The real step up, however, will be if car makers manage to use solid state batteries, which can store more power, save space and reduce fire risks. And despite a lot of investment from companies such as Volkswagen, Toyota and Honda, these types of batteries are still some way off. As well as improving EV technology, one aim here is to divert supply chains away from China because China accounts for more than 70% of lithium-ion batteries and it also dominates lithium processing. So we do expect a lot more investment in battery manufacturing, lithium processing and new battery types in the US, Asia and EU in the next few years. So to sum up, we're expecting EV sales to carry on booming, 29% growth this year, you said, Arushi, but trade tensions will continue because of China's dominance of the sector. That brings us to the end of this Global Outlook video, so I'd like to thank Arushi Initiative for their insight. You'll find plenty more about the EV market on EIU's Viewpoint website on main subscription service. Goodbye.